This is an alert from the Millerverse. This is not a test. The podcast you are listening to is intended for your entertainment and benefit. Any opinions expressed by the host do not necessarily reflect those of any sponsor, publisher, elected official, monarch, parent company, or subsidiary. Please continue listening with caution. After this message, nothing is sacred. Without further delay, here is your host, A.P. Miller. Welcome back to the Millerverse Podcast, everybody. I am your host, writer, novelist, all-around great guy to know, A.P. Miller. Today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about how we're going to make you some money, hopefully. Business concepts to apply to your writing career right now to get you in the mindset of generating income as an independent author. We got the Rapid Fire Book Review. We get the book that I like the very least, Vision Quest by Terry Davis. We're going to close out the show with a writing prompt, but first, Days of the Phoenix by A.P. Miller is available right now exclusively on Amazon.com. Pick up the sophomore novel by A.P. Miller that is taking a big swing at the stigma of mental illness and reaching out for the most authentic life. Days of the Phoenix available right now at Amazon.com. So, last week we talked about marketing strategies for the independent authors because independent authors hate marketing. I introduced the concept that I apply to my writing career that being an independent fiction writer is a small business. And I say that for these reasons. One, I'm creating a product in my writing and my books. Two, I release those books for mass consumption. Three, in order for those books to be consumed, I'm expecting consideration or money exchange for the product. In order to get people to know about my product, I'm responsible for telling them. That's marketing. And number five, I alone am the marketing team, the sales team, the customer service department, and the finance department. Now, not everyone has to feel this way. The direction that you have for yourself is perfectly fine and acceptable. I am not trying to make anyone feel any one way, unless it's to buy my book. Uh, What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to provide information for those who think like I do, maybe offer a different perspective on writing income, or share some wisdom that you may not have considered before. Last week I said, I don't care for those videos that tell you how to get rich quick, mostly because they're garbage, and second because they paint an unrealistic picture of how liquidity is obtained. There's no substitute for hard work, whether it be in the creative process or in the operating of your brand. There's no magic formula that will render marketing and advertisement irrelevant. There's no formula that will put millions of dollars in your bank account instantly. Generating revenue requires an effort, and while effort doesn't always directly relate to income uh, with effort applied, no effort will not render revenue. Think about that. Doing nothing will not automatically put money in your bank account. Nine times out of 10, those get rich quick videos, they want you to buy into the get rich quick mindset. And you know who's making money on that? The people making the videos. How easy would it be to say, hey, I've got a book on how to make a million dollars. You buy it for me for $4.99. I'll send you the secrets. Well, who's making money on that? Isn't you. So the preference to my presentation is there is no shortcut around hard work and dedication to quality. So I've got four concepts that are universally accepted in business that I want to consider, have you consider to be part of your writing career. Concept number one, adopt and embrace the four functions of management. Managing yourself and your workflow is essential, but that's not really eye-opening or groundbreaking information, is it? Managing yourself can be really loosely interpreted, and that's where a lot of people get themselves in trouble, yours truly especially. There is a couple times when I dedicate myself to managing my life and my workflow and I go out and buy an expensive planner, rearrange workspace, and be elated that I was going to be on top of what I had to do. Now, at the end of the week, all I'd accomplished was wasting my money on a planner that I didn't use, making a corner of my room look nice, and frustrating myself that I still couldn't get a grip on what I needed to do. Now, that happened because I wasn't embracing the four functions of management. The four functions of management are essentially the essence of what management really is. Now, those four functions of management are planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. Well, what does that mean? Planning is exactly what it sounds like. Making plans, contemplating difficulty, proactively contemplating solutions, planning contingency for your plans, planning contingencies for those contingencies. Thorough planning is crucial to any business endeavor. I I don't think that's a brand new concept. Knowing where you want to go, how you're going to get there, that's pretty simple stuff. Uh, The next function, organizing. Gathering and collecting the resources needed to execute an objective. You're planning on having a huge release party where you want to sell a ton of books. Okay, well, you obviously have to have a lot of your books on hand, so you need to order those. You want to have business cards ordered. Hey, you got to make sure they are printed and delivered before the event. You want to have banners printed. Uh, It's even contracting manpower. Are you going to have a friend take payments for the book? Are you going to have uh, people serving drinks? Are you going to have people parking cars? That's organizing, getting, securing those services. Leading is managing and marshalling 
forces and resources. You want the plan to be executed a certain way. It is your job to give directions to have the wheels moving in the direction according to plan. When people have questions, you provide them answers and solutions according to the plan. Uh, the caterer comes to your event for your release party and says, uh, we got orders for, for white flowers and pink flowers. Which one do you want? Well, which one did you see as part of your vision? Which one's part of the plan? That is your responsibility to give that direction to make sure that that is followed through. Finally, there's controlling. And controlling is monitoring and evaluating activities and response. Is your book sales not doing great? Is that because your advertising is ineffective? Where you're advertising, does one aspect of the plan need to be altered to meet the objective? That's controlling, making controls, making changes, calling, being the quarterback. That is, that is management in a nutshell. The uh, four functions of management are constantly cyclical. There is no end to management, only where you are in phases of the procedure. Concept number two, business development. Now, business in this context is defined as revenue coming in. Obviously, we want the most income arriving and on the most value and one of the most valuable resources when it comes to developing business is to place value on the folks who have purchased your product and even better when they identify themselves to you. If someone approaches you and says, hey, I really liked your book, your first response should be, hey, thank you very much and to be sincere about it. Your second response should be, can you tell me what you like most about it? Because that's going to identify what your strengths are. The, sec, uh, the next question should be, what parts weren't your favorite? Because that's going to tell you where you might need to improve. And finally, can I get your email address so that I can add you to my mailing list? In that conversation, you've identified customer identity, which has demographic information, your strengths, your weaknesses, and you've asked for a vehicle to reach a customer in hopes of repeat business. Think of your mailing list as your book of business and treat it like gold. Those folks actively want to connect with you and buy your product. They need to be worshipped. Well, not worshipped, but uh, very valued, valued very highly. Concept number three, the SWOT matrix. S-W-O-T, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. This is a time for internal reflection about how your writing business is performing and to implement the four functions of management to reach the pinnacle of improvement. To assemble the SWOT matrix, take a piece of paper or open a spreadsheet and divide it into four quadrants, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and then list them accordingly based on how you see yourself. Now, strengths is internal. What do you, what do, you do best for your writing business? Uh, do you have a strong grip on management? Are you an excellent marketer? Do you have a knack for creative solutions for your business needs? What do you see is the most value valuable function that you can perform in a business sense? We're all here because we're very, very good at writing, or at least we want to think we are. Uh, that sounded a little conceited on my part. Um, we're here because we think we have a talent. We know we have a skill that people value. And so this is the strengths of the business. So to write down, hey, I'm a really good writer, not really productive whenever you're trying to identify what's best for your writing business. Weaknesses is also internal. Where do you need improvement? Do you need to manage your time better? Do you shy away from marketing because you think it's painful? Is your customer response lacking? Those sort of things. What can you do better that will get more money in your pocket? Now, opportunities is the external climate to be taken advantage of. Is there a new writing platform that was just announced? Is there a writing social network? Is there a new way to share your work? Is there a new way to monetize your work? Is another writer looking for a partner? Looking, forecasting, searching for ways to make more money using your writing skills. And then threats are the external factors that could hurt your ability to produce income. Laws and legislature on how creative license is calculated. Copyright laws changing against your favor. Uh, a new trend in writing styles or consumption that you are struggling with. Things that make it difficult for you to make money that are not in your direct control. And then it's your job as a manager, we talked about what the four functions of management are, your job as a manager to change your business process to minimize the threats, maximize opportunities. Once your matrix is complete, you will have a very realistic view of where your writing business is. And then finally, concept number four is reporting. This is your writing business. You are the CEO, you are the boss, you are calling the shots. Creating and reviewing reports can be a chore, and that's no secret, it's not fun. So why would you willingly bring it on yourself? Because it serves a purpose and it doesn't have to be a chore. At your day job, your boss and your boss's boss ask for reports so that they can get an idea of how functions are performing and what needs to be improved on or what needs to be changed. As a small business owner of a creative outlet, you should expect no less from yourself. A weekly report will identify what needs to be changed so that you are correcting direction in the most timely and effective way possible. Honestly, you should be excited to see reports. 
you should look forward to seeing your sales number go up, your social interaction numbers go up, the number of subscribers to your YouTube channel and your mailing list go up. If you go into that meeting with yourself expecting positive res- uh, ex- with a positive expectation, you're going to experience positive results. Even if the news isn't good, you didn't make as much, your subscribers went down, you completely flipped your lid on Twitter and a bunch of people unfollowed you, you should still be positive because you have identified what needs to be made to produce positive results. The reports that I present for myself every week, I put together a sales report, I compare what I've sold for the week, the month, the quarter, and the year. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but there are some sirens going on in the back and it's a fire truck. I hope everyone's okay. Uh, So I put together a sales report uh, for the week, month, quarter, and year. And I compare that to the previous period's report. That's how you gauge progress. You want to see your numbers go up and up and up. And hopefully you're reaching a bunch more people. Um, I also track social media interactions. Uh, How many friends and followers I've got on each platform. How many subscribers. Uh, That is telling me a couple different things. It tells me where my social reach is strongest. And where my social reach needs to be improved. And then finally, I provide a report of my expenses. Now, this is really helpful at tax time. I keep track of what I spend for my writing business, hopefully to identify a tax write-off or opportunities to claim deductions. This also helps me track where I need to stop spending or where my, where my writer budget is, is going to. Is it effective? Is it useful? Where can I mitigate expenses to maximize income? When you go into this meeting with yourself... Make it a good meeting. You know, make a good cup of coffee. Um, Write yourself a positive affirmation and expect great things. I started thinking of myself as a writing business when I was watching something that was making me pretty irritated and I wanted to flip the way I was thinking about it. I don't like being angry. I like to try to put myself in a positive mindset because it just benefits everyone. Being angry all the time is just giving someone free rent in your head and I'm a business person. I want to make money off that rent. So uh, it was a video about this garbage presentation about buying into business opportunities. It it was essentially multi-level marketing. And I thought to myself in disgust, you know, I want to start my own business, but not according to that clown. And then it dawned on me. I do own my own business. Based on the definitions of making money, controlling response and processes, I am a business owner. Now, if you need permission to start your writing business, this is it. You have the green light. Make it happen. There's this idea out there that It's expensive to start a business. And the truth is the writing business is one you can start with literally no capital. You right now can go out and say, okay, I'm in business for myself. I'm a business owner. The words in your brain, well, that's the product. So there's no cost of goods sold. You don't need to buy software right away because Google Office, the suite is free and has all the functions you need. Building a platform and presence is a zero cost game because social media outlets like WordPress and Wix, uh, Costs nothing to open up a Twitter account, create a Facebook page, and you can market yourself through genuine interactions with people who read and write. It costs nothing to talk to someone at a bookstore or to go to a library or to be on social media and just be involved in the writing community, uh, the reading community, getting a hold of booktubers, being genuine about yourself. You're like, hey, I'm a writer. This is what I do, but I want to connect with you as a person. Those are the interactions. That's what makes networking effective and powerful. That was my dog. Now, at the very same time, When your writing business begins producing positive results, it is incredibly important to reinvest in yourself. Put some of that money back into advertising your book. Put some of that money back into your skills. Maybe take a class. Whatever you need to do to get your skills and your abilities to that next level. Coming up, we got the next, uh, we got the rapid fire book review. But first, Days of the Phoenix by A.P. Miller is available right now exclusively through Amazon.com. Pick up the sophomore novel by A.P. Miller that is taking a big swing at the stigma of mental illness and reaching for the most authentic life possible. There's the Phoenix available right now at Amazon.com. It's time now for the rapid fire book review. My review this week is Vision Quest by Terry Davis. Now, I'm someone who loves to find out that some of my favorite movies were based on books and then go out and devour the book. This is one of the rare times that I was disappointed in that regard. I first watched Vision Quest because I enjoy and spent a season competing in. 